Welcome again, saints of God. Hallelujah. Welcome again to our program, our Wednesday program. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is my Lord and Savior. It's a pleasure and a joy to be with you again to study the Word of God. This is another Wednesday the Lord has given us and we rejoice in Him for giving us another lease of life. Last time we had a wonderful topic, the law, and the Christian and the law. And it was part one. Today we are going to listen to part two. And I know that there is a lot that the Lord wants us to learn. And I know that there is something the Lord wants you and me to be taught by the Spirit of God. So once again, I welcome all of you. And for those who are logging in for the first time, this is Destiny of Christian International Ministries coming all the way from Douglasville, Atlanta, Georgia where we study the word of God together so that we can mature in the ways of the Lord. Hallelujah. So once again, last time, as I had said, we had a wonderful, wonderful topic where the spirit of the Lord was teaching us that we must acknowledge that man has a spirit of rebellion. Remember, that is what the word of God was telling us. And we have to be reconciled, but we are not left helpless. We have a reconciler. Hallelujah. The reconciler is Jesus Christ. And how do we rec uh, how are we reconciled? Is by repenting. When you repent your sin, saints of God, you are forgiven. You are cleansed by the blood of Jesus that he shed on the cross for you and me. And then we are reconciled. And at the end of it all, we can see the Father. That is the reason. So when we, we are done with this world, when we, we die, we can see the Father. So that is the purpose of teaching uh, this word tonight so that we can know that we have not been left helpless. There is a reconciler who is Jesus Christ. So tonight, if you have never given your life to Christ, you have an opportunity to come to know the Lord and make him the Lord of your life so that at the end of this world, you will be able to see the Father. Thank you for tuning once again. And I know that tonight, the Lord is going to bless us. I want to say also thank you for those who are in the studio. They normally take their time to come and be with us. I want to assure you that it's not in vain. The Lord will bless you for that. And also for those who are giving to this ministry, we also want to say thank you. However, whatever amount you give, it is very welcome. And thank you because you are helping us to do that which the Lord has called us to do. There are also those who lift up us up in prayer. We appreciate your prayers. That is why we are standing strong every Wednesday because we know that there are saints that are praying for us. So we say thank you even as you fellowship together with us tonight. Let us open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you tonight and we want to bless you. We want to lift up your name, the name above all names. Tonight, Father, we are grateful that you have given us another opportunity to sit and be taught your word by your spirit, O oh God, who is our teacher. We want to thank you, Father, for the week that has gone. Thank you for sustaining us, O oh God, despite what your people have gone through and what we have gone through. At the end of it all, Father, we have emerged victorious because of your power, O oh God. You have been a good shepherd to us for us. You have, uh, you have provided for us. You have protected us, Father. And we walk in divine health. We are of sound mind. And for that, Father, we are so grateful. So tonight we come before you with the saints that are logged in and those who will listen to this teaching even uh, months and years to come. We come before you, my Father, and confess our sins and we ask you to forgive us. You are so merciful, Heavenly Father. Wash us with the blood that was shed on the cross for us. And tonight, Father, give us hearts that are teachable, hearts that are going to receive your word, O oh God, so that when your word come forth, Lord, it will have a nice place that, Father, we are going to mature in your ways, O oh Lord. Father, I want to lift up the listeners who, who are listening tonight and those who will listen to this ministry. Father, I am praying that tonight the word that will come forth will come forth with the power to bless all of us, Father, and to, meet, to, to reach us at our point of need tonight. If they are having any need, Lord, because you know it, Holy Spirit of God, you understand them. You know, Father, what they have gone through. There are those who have, who have had a stressful week. There are those who are sick in their body. There are those who are having difficulty in their marriages. There are those who are having financial difficulties. Oh God, you understand the situation, 
for your people, oh God. So tonight, Father, we are praying that you meet each one of us at our point of need, oh God. When that word come, let it bring a calmness. Let that word bring a peace. Let that word bring joy to those who have no joy. Let that word, Father, bring assurance for those who have no assurance in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I want to lift those who are in jail because there are people, Lord, who are in jail at this time. Heavenly Father, we are praying that your spirit will meet them wherever they are, Heavenly Father, that they may be able to know you, that the Spirit of God will convict them, especially those who do not know you tonight. My Father, we remember them, some our family members, some our friends, oh God, and even those I have prayed for, those who are in jail. Heavenly Father, that your Spirit will minister to them, that your Spirit will convict them, they'll come to repentance, they'll come to know you as Lord and Savior, and they'll have hope of eternal life, because that is the purpose oh God oh heavenly father we are praying that tonight when your word comes it will come forth with the power to touch us oh God once again to meet us where nobody can teach us to open our eyes oh God so that we may be able to understand your word even better hallelujah spirit of God you are our teacher tonight father we sit to listen Give us a heart that is able to receive and an ear that is able to hear the voice of the Spirit of God, not the voice of a man, but the voice of your Spirit, O oh God, so that we can mature and grow in your ways, O oh God, and be able to walk in obedience according to your word, my Father. So tonight, Heavenly Father, we come covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, and we also take authority. We come against every spirit of the enemy, any arrow that he has sent against us tonight, we nullify it in the mighty name of Jesus and we command every demonic power to go back to the bottomless pit in Jesus' name. And Father, we declare that this place now is cleansed by the blood of Jesus. The dwelling places of your people, Father, their homes are cleansed with the blood of Jesus. And now we are all standing on holy ground where Jesus Christ is worthy to be glorified. Hallelujah. I want to lift up your servant as he brings the word tonight. Heavenly Father, this is the man you have called for such a time and for this generation to speak your word, O oh God, with the power and authority. So tonight, Father, we speak your anointing upon his life in the mighty name of Jesus that you'll give him wisdom, you'll give him understanding, you'll give him revelation of your word, O oh God, and your word will come forth easy for even young children to understand, O oh God. Hallelujah. So we cover him with the blood of Jesus. Father, we step aside tonight. And we allow your spirit to reign in this place. Holy Spirit of God, you are welcome. You are welcome in the dwelling places of your people. You are welcome in this studio and have your way. Speak to us tonight. Teach us that which you need us to know tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, meet each one of us at our point of need. And at the end of it all, may we have a witness that we have been in the presence of the Lord, that the Spirit of God has touched us, that the Spirit of God has taught us new things. Hallelujah. That the Spirit of God has revealed the truth of the Word because it's the truth that we know that will set us free. Hallelujah. We are ready, Spirit of God. We are ready to receive your Word. We are ready to be taught of you. Hallelujah. We are ready to be ministered to by your Spirit, O oh God. So we thank you tonight, my Father, and we bless you. At the end of all this, you receive the glory and receive the honor. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have prayed and the people of God say, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. So tonight, get your notebook, get a nice place to sit, invite a friend so that we can listen to the word of God tonight. It is my joy and my pleasure to welcome the servant of God, the founder of Doc International Ministry, to continue with the teaching of tonight. I know there is something the Spirit of the Lord wants us to learn, and I know that at the end of it all, we shall have a witness that we have learned something new. So God bless you as we listen together. You are welcome. I pray that the presence of the Lord will touch you wherever you are during the ministry of this word. We are going to start on the second part where we left off. So this is part two of 
what is the purpose of the law. And we are going to be guided by the scripture from the book of Romans chapter 7. If you have your Bible, look at Romans chapter 7. <clears throat> and I will start reading from verse 18. Romans 7 from verse 18 to uh, verse 23. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwells no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would do, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no, not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. Verse 21, I find then a law that when I want to do good, <clears throat> evil is present with me. And verse 22, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. I will start by introducing again the topic of righteousness. <clears throat> as far as God is concerned, righteousness that comes from him can only be obtained by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not by observing the law of Moses or any law. The Bible is specific and clear about the righteousness of God. We are not talking about the righteousness of man. What we may call righteousness. What I may call righteousness. We are talking about the righteousness of God. It comes from God the Father. To get that, there is only one way God has established and that is by the way of faith. It is not by obeying the law of Moses or any law. You cannot get righteousness of God through that means. Now, from the minute we trust in God and we receive his righteousness, our life is governed by what is called in the Bible the law of faith. In other words, a believer who has believed and has received the righteousness of God by faith, he or she from that point begins to walk by faith and not by the works of the law. In other words, you cannot say, now that I have received the righteousness of God, I can do the works of the law. No. The Galatians started doing something like that. They got saved and they received the righteousness of God by faith. And then after that, they tried to go back to observing the law. And Paul had to rebuke them. And he called them foolish Galatians. Why? Because they were going back to observing the law of Moses. But when you receive the righteousness that comes from God the Father, you do not go back to observing the law. You continue now walking by faith. You obey the law of faith. <clears throat> Last time, we explained that because we are being governed by the law of faith, from the time we receive the righteousness of God, we are therefore not under the law. Because we are not, we are not following the law anymore, we are following the law of faith. You are a believer wherever you are. 
Hear the word of the Lord. You do not walk by observing the law. You walk by the law of faith. Therefore, you are not under the law. Now, we saw during the last message that we need then to ask ourselves, then why was the law given? If believers are no longer under the law of Moses, what was the purpose of God giving the law? And we saw in, our, in the first part of this topic, the first purpose of the law. Why did God give the law? The first reason why the law was given, that is what we dealt with last time. And we saw purpose number one is for the law to reveal sin. Mm. And we explained that sin is in this flesh. And sin was there before the law was given. During the time of Noah, it was there. <clears throat> and sin was working until God had to destroy the whole earth because of sin. Therefore, sin was very much alive even before the law was given. But when the law was given, the law gave sin strength. In other words, as long as there is a law, the sin in this flesh desires to break it. We must remember that. Every time a law is given, we have something in this body, the spirit of rebellion, a seed of rebellion, it does not uh, want to obey the law. So when the law is given, the sin in us becomes very active in trying to break the law. Therefore, God said, I will show you there is something wrong in you. I will give you the law. And when I give you the law, that thing that is wrong in you is going to react negatively. You will not be able to obey it because of that nature of yours. So that is the first purpose of the law. It is to reveal that sin is already in this flesh. And because sin is in this flesh, the law is also revealing that you and me are sinners. That is the first purpose of the, of the law. Why was the law given? First reason, to reveal sin, that sin exists mm -hmm. in us. So today, we are going to look at the second reason, the second purpose, why the law was given. Now we know the first purpose is that the law was given to tell us there is sin in us. Now the second reason is for the law to prove that we are incapable of saving ourselves from the sin that is in us. In other words, the second purpose of the law is to tell us we cannot establish our righteousness by trying to obey the law. Now, here is the first part, the first reason. The law reveals sin in us. The second reason is telling us because of that revelation, because there is sin in us, we can never make ourselves righteous before God. Why? Because of the sin revealed by the law. So the second purpose then of the law is to tell us we are unable to get away from sin, to get away from the spirit of rebellion, to get away from the seed of rebellion, to get away from this desire to break the law. We have no power to get away from that. And this is the reason we are discussing today. The law is given to simply again show us that we are unable, you and me, we don't have the power to break away from the power of sin by our own efforts. Therefore, the law is telling us or showing us the inability in us to establish righteousness that God desires. So here is the law. And we are saying we want to establish our righteousness by following the law. 
But the law is telling us you can do it. Now, there are two ways of establishing righteousness. One is God's way. And God says there is only one way you can be righteous with me. And that is by faith. But unfortunately, the human race does not want to go the way the Lord has laid out. The human race desires an alternative. The human race says, we do not want to obey what God is telling us that there is only his way. We want our way. And when we want our way, what we are doing is we are rejecting God's method of making us righteous. And we are therefore looking for another alternative. And the other alternative is to begin to try and obey the law. Instead of doing what God is saying, instead of following God's direction that we can get the righteousness by faith, we reject that method and we begin to find an alternative of getting righteous with God. How foolish can we be? Here God is saying, only me can give you righteousness by faith. You can receive it by faith. And here we are as human beings, we say, no, we will not get righteousness by faith. We want to obey the law. And in obeying the law, <clears throat> what we are doing is we are looking for another alternative that is not dependent on God. Therefore, people switch from the way God is telling us to follow and people want to go the way of the law. They try to observe the law and not only to observe the law, there is something very dangerous that has been happening for years. We have the law of Moses. More than that, we have many religious laws. Many religions. They have come up with man-made regulations. Laws that they impose on the believers and they tell them unless you obey these particular laws uh, uh, rules and regulations you cannot be accepted by God but now the law is revealing something very very special it is saying this you cannot be approved of God by obeying not even the law of Moses, but also any other regulation. To put it simply, God is saying you can never attain righteousness by any law, whether it is the law of Moses or whether it is the regulations and rules that are made in the churches today. Many religions, they have a set of rules. And God is saying, you can never attain righteousness by obeying those laws, those regulations. There is only one way. Let me give you an example of what happened to Israel. In the book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, we find um, something explained there concerning the way Israel chose. When Jesus was there, he was teaching them and they thought that by obeying the law of Moses, they are going to be accepted. In other words, the Israelites, particularly the, the religious bodies like the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they said this, the law of Moses is enough for us. We are going to establish our righteousness by obeying the law of Moses. People of God, 
God is already saying it is impossible to obey the law of Moses. It is impossible to obey any set of regulations. Israel tried it and they failed because they chose a different method of making themselves righteous, but they could not make it. So that's a perfect example of the people of Israel. They chose a different way to establish their righteousness and they thought they were going to be accepted by God. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out that way for one reason. When you make a set of rules and regulations, and when you decide you are going to obey the law of Moses, you come face to face with a big, big problem. And the problem is explained in the verses we have just read in the book of Romans chapter 7 from verse 18 to the end. What is the problem when we decide we are not going to do it God's, God's way? We are going to set up a set of rules and regulations. We are going to obey those rules. We are going to take the law of Moses and we are going to obey it. And then we will be good before the Lord. But there is a major problem that is explained in the verses we have just read. The problem is this. When you try to obey any law to make yourself righteous, whether it is the law of Moses or a set of rules, you come face to face with what is called in the verses I have just read, especially um, uh, verse 23 of Romans 10, 7, verse 23, you come face to face with what is known as the law of sin. Now, the law of sin opposes everybody who tries to follow um, the rules, the law of Moses, any set of regulations. When we try to obey those rules, we are opposed by the law of sin. Now, what is the law of sin? The law of sin is what has already been revealed by the law, the very first purpose. The law has shown there is something in us that does not want to obey the law of God. So the law of sin begins to oppose us. When we try to do according to the law, then the law of sin says, don't do it. And the law of sin is so powerful, it defeats any effort to obey even the law of Moses, leave alone the religious rules that are established by men. The law of sin, it means in this flesh, there dwells something that is not good. That is what Paul is saying. There is something in this flesh and that is sin. And because it is in this flesh, it rebels against any law. Whether it is the law of God or the law of man. Remember Adam and Eve? That thing rose up when they were given only one commandment and they broke that commandment. So the law is telling us here something very deep and very simple. If you and me decide we are going to obey the law and thereby establish our righteousness, the, the word of, the, of God then comes and tells us you have a big problem. Because the law of sin is going to oppose you and you will never make it. You will never be able to obey the very regulations you want to obey. You will never make it trying to obey the law of Moses because there is another law in this flesh. The law of sin that says no. When you try to do good, it says no. And in the verses we have just read, 
we find this great apostle Paul struggling with this law of sin. This is what he says, I want to do good. Just like many people, when they are trying to obey the, the, the law of Moses or the regulations established by the church, they want to do good. But listen to Paul as he struggled. He says, I really desire to do what the law tells me. But the ability to do it, I don't have. That's it. The ability to obey is not there. Why? Because of the law of sin. The law of sin says, no, you don't obey. Therefore, the law here is telling us it is impossible to obey the law in order to establish our own righteousness. Now, the conclusion then of what I'm saying is this. You can never establish your righteousness, your own righteousness, or my own righteousness by obeying any law, whether it is the law of Moses or whether it is man-made regulation in the churches. You can never become righteous. Because as I have just said, there is something opposing the obedience of the law. So you try to obey and you keep on failing. You try to obey, you keep on failing. That is what Paul is saying. He tried and he was saved and he was a man who knew the law and he tried to abide by the law. But he admitted, I tried to do it, but I don't have the ability to obey it. Yes, I want to do the good the law tells me to do, but I can't do it. And he said, the reason is there is something in the flesh that opposes obedience. And it is the law of sin. Now, in coming to summarize what we are talking about, the question we are trying to answer is this. What is the second purpose of the law? The second purpose of the law is to prove to every human being that it is impossible to attain the righteousness, righteousness of God by trying to obey the law. Why? Because of the law of sin. It opposes us. When you have time, read again and again Romans chapter 7 from verse 18 to the end. And you see the struggle that this great apostle was going through. So the law then proves this, that it is impossible for me to be righteous before God by obeying the law. It is absolutely impossible. Hear the word of the Lord if you have been trying to live by the law, you will not make it. You will never make it. You will never become righteous in the eyes of God because the law of sin will not permit you or permit anybody to be capable of obeying the entire law or any set of regulation. And we find that what Paul is saying is true. The more you try to obey the law, the more you try to obey this, the, a set of regulations, the more we fail. The more we struggle, the more we fail. Now, <clears throat> in order to explain this clearly, what we are struggling with, I want to refer you to the book of Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah chapter 13 and verse 23. <clears throat> uh, Jeremiah chapter 13 and verse 23. Now, this verse explains the impossibility of trying to please God by obeying a set of rules or even the law of Moses. And it gives us the reason why we are incapable of obeying the law and therefore we cannot be called righteous before God 
by trying to obey the law because it is impossible to attain righteousness by observing the law. That verse says this. It's a question God was asking. Can an Ethiopian change his color? Well, the Ethiopian color is one color. Can he change that color? And of course, the answer is no. He cannot change his color. The pigmentation, he cannot change. And then it goes on to ask, can a leopard change its spots? And of course, the answer is a leopard cannot change its spots. In the same way then, we are trying to change spots in us. The sin that is in this flesh is like the spot on a leopard. Just like a leopard cannot change its spot, neither can we, can we change the spot of sin in us. We have no ability to change it. Even if we try to obey the law or a set of regulations, there is one thing that is clear. We cannot change our spots. Neither can a leopard change its spots. In other words, the nature of desiring to break the law of God, because it is in this flesh, there is no way of dealing with that. We cannot change it by our own effort by trying to obey the law. Because when we try to obey the law, it is by our own effort. It's like we are saying, I am determined to obey this. That's your own effort. That's my own effort. And go back to the leopard. No matter what the leopard tries to do, it shall never change its spots. Neither can any human being change the spot of sin in the flesh. Hallelujah. That is the whole matter. So when we try to, to, to do good by obeying the law or obeying a set of regulations, what we are trying to do is to change the spots that are in us. And we can't, just like a leopard cannot change its spots. In concluding then, this answer or this topic about the second purpose of the law to show us that it is impossible for us to change our nature by obeying the law, God summarizes this very well in the book of Romans 3 and verse 20. This is the summary of the inability and the uselessness of trying to obey the law in order to achieve righteousness. This is what God says in Romans 3 and verse 20. No flesh, in other words, no human being will ever be justified before me by the works of the law. Hear the words of the Lord direct from the mouth of the living God. No one, no human being will ever be called righteous by God simply because they have tried to obey the law. Because it is impossible to obey the law. That's a wonderful summary of what we are talking about. God summarizes it by saying, <clears throat> let me tell you this. Don't bother trying to attain righteousness by obeying the law. Because as God I am telling you, no one, no human being will ever be justified before me by the works of the law. That is the word of the Lord. Amen. Now, this then brings us to the third reason why God gave the law. And the third reason which we are going to discuss next time, it tells us, the law tells us what is the solution God has provided to this problem of humanity, the problem 
of trying to change our sport and it is impossible using our own methods to change our sports just like a leopard cannot change its sport what is god's solution we are going to find out next wednesday by looking at the third purpose why the law was given and with that <clears throat> i pray that the lord is going to minister to your spirit this word give you understanding and the revelation that you need so that you can continue to mature i pray that he will release his favor on you i pray that he will bless the work of your hands i pray at this time that he will answer every cry of your heart i pray that he will lead you to greatness and that you will be the head and not the tail in jesus name amen Thank you everyone for joining us today to hear the word of God and if you would like to give to the ministry you can visit our website at www.destinyofchristians.org Again the website is www.destinyofchristians.org So with that said make sure to join us next week live on Wednesday at 8 p.m. So may God bless you and watch over you throughout the week, and we will see you next time.